I've been exclusively using e-ink tablets as my planner at work for two years, but this fortnight I'm going to go back to the iPad as a planner. I did try this before and my TLDR conclusions were that the Apple Pencil is excellent, but Scribble is a little bit rubbish. Scribble, that's the handwriting everywhere thing that the iPad OS has. If I just add a text box in here and I just start writing, it'll turn it into type text. But editing it afterwards is always a bit of a pain, I find. I know there are some gestures and things, but as you can see, it's just, it's never an easy use. But every time you use the Apple Pencil, you're impressed at how good it is, how little latency there is, the pressure sensitivity, and the accuracy. On a few occasions, I've said that the iPad is the single device that educators or professionals should get, that it wasn't the best at any individual task, but it's a great all-rounder. In fact, I like the iPad so much that I bought one for every member of my science department a few years back. It's a truly great device, but it has one fatal flaw, which means that I don't personally want to use it at work. But then I am a self-professed e-ink addict, and I found that using the iPad for my planner added so much screen time looking at LCD screens that it was impossible for me just to add another one into my workflow. So I am really skeptical as to whether I'll be happy with the LCD screen for my planner, but I will have to keep an open mind and really try and see the comparison with fresh eyes. Well, that's a pertinent point. I'll have fresh eyes at the start of every day, but will I have bleary eyes at the end of every day? I'm hoping though that using the iPad this time is gonna save me time and energy for the bit of teaching that I really enjoy. That's being with the students. I hope it will give me great ideas when I'm out of inspiration for planning for the next day at the end of an exhausting day. And if I can do all of that in the same app as my PDF planner, then that might just be enough to convert me and win me back over to the iPad. I'm going to use PDF Element here as my PDF planner. PDF Element is a full PDF editor, but I'm loving that it's part of a full PDF management suite that I can access on the PC, Android, or on the iPad. I have to read and digest PDFs a lot in the course of my work, as well as having to send, receive, fill, edit, and sign PDF files for this YouTube business, as well as in my professional life as a teacher. And you can do all that here on the iPad OS app. It really isn't cut down at all. It's a US form, so I'll have to put it in US. <laughs> you can even do OCR recognition of scans of paper documents right here on the iPad. And that's something that's really useful for going paperless. That I've talked about recently in my look at PDF element on the desktop app, but that's here on the iOS version as well. This was actually a scanned paper, which I've performed OCR on, and now it's all selectable, and I can copy these questions and use them in my worksheets in later lessons. The iPad app is really powerful. It's not just a cut down version of the desktop app, and I love that I can edit everything in my PDF planner. How does Scribble think that was a V? And I don't have to go back into Word to make those edits. And schedules are constantly changing in schools, so it's a real time saver. And I'm also looking forward to be able to add links, especially adding web links to cloud locations. This makes a lot of sense. In my planner, I can add a link to a file in the web, which is the presentation file or the worksheet for that lesson. And that can come directly from my PDF planner. You can actually link to that PowerPoint file and then start presenting directly from the iPad. And so many teachers are still lugging around heavy teacher planners that I wonder why calendar apps haven't taken over. And why am I still recommending a PDF as a tool for planning when there are just so many great alternatives out there? so many seemingly more powerful places for your day-to-day -day planner. There's still just something so enduring about the single page of notes. I want to have my whole day just summarized on one page so that during that time, I can glance down and see what I should be focused on and what I still need to achieve in the day. It's different to a knowledge management system where individual pieces of knowledge need to be filed and categorized. A planner should be infinitely customizable and that's what working in PDF allows me to do. Later, I'll return to e-ink and Android devices and I'll explore if the new version 4 of the PDF Element Android app is just as good as the iOS app is. But in this video, let's find out how I get on with using the iPad as a teacher planner. Which e-ink tablet in particular am I comparing to? Well, the two that are getting closest to iPad functionality are Bigme and Books. They include cameras in their latest professional productivity orientated e-ink tablets. Bigme even has dual cameras, so you could even see yourself using video conferencing apps from the e-ink tablet. But the real standout feature about using the iPad is how good the apps are. And the best that you Using apps on e-ink is actually the books. The GPU gets such great performance out of the color e-ink screen, which enables a good experience of those Android apps. There's also the keyboard case on the Tab Ultra and the Tab Ultra C, which makes it the obvious comparison to the iPad. Thank you to PDF Element for sponsoring this content. Let's talk about the iPad first. There's two things about the e-paper experience which most reviewers and users will talk about. Firstly, there's that screen feel. It feels a little bit like glass. 
but of course you get around that by using either a paper-like or a doodroo screen protector and that's got you covered. Then you've got that friction between the pen and the screen which we all appreciate. It makes it feel like paper, it makes it sound like paper too. But then there's also the reflective nature of an e-paper screen. An iPad can't match that, it's just not the same as e-ink. And so for me, I'm absolutely converted to e-ink for planning and for writing. I'm so certain of the benefits of e-ink that I can firmly say that the LCD screen on an iPad is a drawback. And so far, I've been using this for a few days, about two weeks, and I've not really enjoyed using that LCD screen full-time at work. In fact, when I wrote this part of my little script, my little outline, I was outside and I was using polarizing sunglasses and I was writing it on the iPad and it really wasn't a joy. But in contrast, the previous week, I was using the Tab Ultra C and I was so engrossed in that writing experience because in that setting, the reflective screen just works so very well in that full bright sunlight that I didn't really want the session to end and time sort of passed really quickly. I was right in that flow state and that hour that I spent writing just passed in minutes. On the iPad, however, by the end of it, I felt bleary eyed, I felt tired, I felt sick of writing, I couldn't wait for it to end. It's not just the glare on the screen because the Doodaroo screen protector does take care of that. It's not just this weird color shift that you get when you wear polarizing sunglasses and an LCD screen. It's the bright blue LEDs blaring at you. I was squinting and I had to, of course, have it on full brightness against that reflection from the sky. I could feel my eyes getting tired when I was typing on this thing. And I did try and I do use the 2020 rule where you look into the distance for 20 seconds and you remember to blink and that does help somewhat but it still isn't the same as using an e-ink display and I don't want my writing to feel like that I want my writing to feel like something I want to carry on doing I love getting into that flow state and in fact the screen the LCD screen is not even as good as an OLED screen is for performing in all lighting conditions and I don't know why there aren't OLED iPads yet I wonder if yeah, so they're rumored for 2024. And better late than never, I guess, Apple. What I would really love would be an iPad Pro 12.9 inch with an e-ink screen for planning, and then I'd be sold. Using the iPad just doesn't suit me. But I am really coming around to some of the features of this app. I can edit absolutely everything on the page. I can use both handwritten notes and typed bits of text. I can add links to other things like files or web pages. It's just a much more detailed way to plan. And if I need more space, for instance, I need a new page for meeting notes, well, I can just add one in. And then when I'm done with that, I could always just move that right to the back of my planner. Or of course, I can simply delete it. I can set a password for protection for my PDF. For example, if I wanted to share it securely and I can convert between PDF and a large number of different file formats, which that's already become really convenient. But it is the AI features that I'm really hoping is going to be a real game changer. Luckily, I have a data point to compare to and I know pretty much how long it takes to plan a week on my normal e-ink tablet. I just use scribble annotations on a PDF in just the same way. I've done it so many times and I know that I have to find about one and a half to two hours to plan for the next week. I know that because I block out that amount of time in my schedule and I do normally fit it in. And the real test of this app and the iPad is going to be whether the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. If my planning time is reduced and if the quality of that planning goes up by using the PDF Element iPad app, then I think it might be worth forgetting my e-ink. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna ask the AI to come up with some key activities in each lesson and to plan some of my questioning. I mean, that's definitely all there. There's good examples, there's good questions. It's really useful. So I'm going to be asking questions like that to come up with key activities, key explanations and questions for the kids in my lessons. Certainly coming up with questions is one way I think it can be really useful. Questioning your students is such an important part of teaching and it's where we check whether students have really understood what we've taught them so far before moving on. It's always better when you've planned it beforehand, but the problem is that I rarely have time. So this is such a great way to get that thinking done. Well, the good news is that the app performed brilliantly. It was really useful in planning. In fact, it didn't take me any less time, but the quality and depth of my planning has been massively higher. The bad news is that I just can't really use an LCD display all day, every day. So it's a difficult choice. That's the TLDR anyway. Let's go through the things that I really liked about the PDF Element app and about my experience with planning on the iPad. And then the things that weren't so great. I loved having the chatbot right there for the AI mode. More than I thought I would actually. I like planning creatively, but 
What I enjoy more is planning collaboratively. This is the way I'm thinking about AI integrations in my professional life. AI is like having a collaborator, and it's a collaborator with less experience than me, but it's an enthusiastic and willing <laughs> collaborator. Working with AI is a bit like coaching a junior colleague. They get great ideas and have great willingness and great enthusiasm. It all just needs to be funneled through the lens of experience. I'm often writing prompts that just make subtle changes like number two is a great idea, but can you rephrase it to make it a bit more accessible to a child with a lower reading age? Or good, but can you add a couple of challenging questions? So the students will finish those questions quite quickly. And I always say please because I can't help being polite and it's important to be nice after all. I really like the fact that the planning was available in the document cloud and that's a real game changer to be honest. And in the planner I can link out to any web location including my school's OneDrive and I can access that and edit the planner on my iPad, my desktop at home or on my school laptop and that's awesome. The OCR was also awesome. There was a time in the week where I wanted to use some questions in my lesson and I only had a PDF image scan of it. The OCR gave me all of the text and I could just copy that into my lesson document. It's also great that the iPad has 4G and that just simplifies so many things about working on cloud-based apps. I just don't think that Apple need to really charge £100 extra for it. And it's something that books need to get sorted. I'd love my e-ink tablet to be always connected. And fiddling with hotspots just doesn't do it for me. I can't wait for one of these e-ink companies to actually bring out usable mobile communications in the UK. Bigme has it, but it only works in the Eastern market. It would be really very useful. What I didn't like, not too much with the iPad or the app, but is the size probably. This size, the 12.9 inch iPad, is probably a bit much for a planner. Maybe I'd still go with this big size if I was planning on using the iPad for everything, but as I do have to also use the school laptop for a few things, I'd probably go for the smaller iPad if I wanted to use it just as a planner. And of course, yes, there's the screen, which I think I've probably talked about enough. I mean, it's pretty hard to even see in this bright room at the moment. And ouch, I really struggled to get my head around the iPad user interface. I felt I really struggled to do simple things like copy and paste. Maybe experienced iPad users don't have that issue, but I kept wishing I was on an Android tablet or a laptop. There were also some issues with links working with Microsoft apps. That wasn't the fault of the PDF Element app, but Microsoft really, because I could only open those files within the web app. So as long as the link was being opened in Google Chrome, then it was working just fine. But with the actual iOS versions of the Microsoft apps, they didn't open. And then there was the battery life. I lost 30% of battery just in the hour I spent planning. I'm just not used to that anymore. And if you present from the iPad, then it would drain in a couple of hours. I've really enjoyed presenting in lessons from the iPad, but it certainly saps the battery quickly. The one good thing about the battery life is that the standby mode is really very low power and it can sit for hours in the bag and not have lost a great deal of charge. And it has to be said that this is the pre M1 generation of iPad and it's still performing very well. It's the year before M1. So it suffices to say that I will be going back to e-ink, which means going back to Android as well. But I can recommend, if you're a competent iPad user, PDF Element, it's a really good iOS app. It does what it says it does. But wait, there is an Android app too. So I can do all of this amazing stuff on my e-ink tablet. And the Android app has the AI chatbot as well. So, well, let's get testing that. But can the books manage the pen input and have it optimized like the OneNote app is? Maybe that's a topic for another video. I wonder if I could make an AI planner that I could export as a PowerPoint and that could just simply be my lesson materials. I don't even need to. Maybe I could just simply share the PDF at the front. But that's just it. These really powerful tablets coupled with the really powerful app PDF element, it's got so many possibilities. And this is one of the things I've always loved about my job, innovating and being creative in the way that I work. So, Roll on the week ahead, I've got so many exciting things to plan.